Uh, very good morning. Today we will be discussing about BTS sampling plants. What we have studied or what we have discussed so far is about the sampling methods, OC curves, etc. So sampling plan, because uh, uh, already I have told you that Depending upon the sampling plan, the OC curve is going to differ. So let us know what is meant by sampling plan. Okay. Sampling plan is nothing but, but the, what should be the lot size? Depending upon the lot size, how many samples are to be taken and what should be the acceptance number? It will consist of these three things. That means the parameters for any sampling plan will be these three. Parameters for sampling plan. Parameters. Lot size. Sample size, and see the acceptance number. Okay, this is for single sampling plan. So there are, we are going to consider three types of sampling plans. One is single sampling plan, second one is double sampling plan, and the third one is the multiple sampling plan. So which one is better and which one is to be selected and other things we will discuss. First let us know what is meant by single sampling plan. In a single sampling plan, only one opportunity is given for the lot either to accept or reject. Okay, and we know if it is an acceptance rectification plan, what needs to be done? In acceptance rectification plan, what is to be done? In acceptance rectification plan, the accepted lots will be accepted and the rejected lots will be subjected to 100% inspection and whatever the defectives have been found out, those are being those are replaced by the good items. That is what is called as acceptance sampling plan. So what is that it is going to differ? For single sampling plan, double sampling plan or the multiple sampling plan. Try to understand we are going to discuss because these sampling plans can be of three types. One is single sampling plan single sampling plan second one is double sampling plan third one is multiple sampling plan okay so in single sampling plan all of these could be all acceptance rectification plans. There is no doubt about it. So what is going to differ? On an average, how many number of pieces will be, items will be inspected? That is going to differ. One thing. Try to understand. That is the economical advantage. That is what we told. Or at the beginning itself, we have discussed that the going for sampling things, so acceptance sampling, the cost of inspection will be reduced. If you look at it, for 100% inspection, if the lot consists of N, all the N will be inspected in 100% inspection. For example, let us say that N is equal to 10,000. 
small n is equal to 50 and acceptance number is equal to 2. What does it mean? Here in single sampling plan, from a lot of 10,000 items, you take a sample of 50, if it consists of two or less than two defectives, accept the lot. Otherwise, reject the lot. If the lot is rejected, 100% inspection will be done. So if it were only the 100% inspection, what is going to happen? If it were only 100% inspection, then all the 10,000 items would have been inspected. Whereas, if it were acceptance sampling, how many pieces will be inspected? Any idea? This might be a sort of objective type of question. In that case, the minimum we are going to inspect is 50 and the maximum number of inspection of items will be 10,000. It will be anywhere between these two, depending on the quality of that particular lot. It understood? Depending on the quality of that particular lot, this is what is going to happen. That is, average total or inspection on an average, how many pieces will be inspected? It depends on that. Okay? Let me say that this is the lot size is 10,000, sample size is 100, and to make the things simpler, that is what I am telling you. And the acceptance number is 2, and suppose if I assume that the inspector or the whatever the producer he claims is, or AQL, acceptable quality level is 2.5%. AQL you can call or AQL is equal to pre-prime, this is equal to 2.5%. Under these circumstances, what is the probability of acceptance of the lot? How to calculate it? Because here you can see that if all the lot, whatever the lot is there, likewise, see, don't be under the impression only one lot like this will be submitted. So like this 10,000 items, Several lots are submitted. The quantity is whose? That is why this, all these problems. Otherwise there was no problem at all. If it is only manufacturing of one or two items or five items, there is no problem. But when the quantity is very huge, it becomes difficult. Okay? Then, what is to be done under such circumstances? Because 10,000 the lot size is 10,000 like this, some 500 lots have been submitted. What you will do in that case? Precisely that is the thing that you need to think. Not one or two items or something like that. But under these circumstances, how many lots will be accepted if all of them, if it is really good, the lot, if it contains, contains zero defective and the, because all 100% it is good, and irrespective. And he will say that, producer will say that, okay, it is 1% defective, or to be to safeguard himself, or even he can say that 0% defective, because all are good. Then the probability of acceptance, it is going to be 100%. And if it, the probability of acceptance is 100%, on an average, how many pieces will have been inspected per lot? which is called as ATI, Average Total Inspection. This is one of the measures of performance, whether which type of the sampling plan we should go. It depends on this ATI value, it compares, okay? So now, if we look at that one, that's why if the lot is really good, that is 0% defective, then 
the lot will be accepted. All the lots will be accepted. On an average per lot, how many pieces will have been inspected? Only that sample size. Only on an average, 100. Over. But if the lot itself is bad, then all the lots will get rejected. Then what is going to be, how many pieces per lot will be inspected? On an average per lot, it is going to be the lot size, that is 10,000. Hence, this average total inspection has got two extremities. One is sample size N, another extremity is lot size capital N. In this particular example, it may vary between 100 to 10,000. But if the lot contains, because when we go for some defectives, you know, then the, when we go for acceptance sampling, the good item, the good lot might be rejected. Is it not? In that case, it is going to vary the limit between these two. That is, what I told you, average total inspection will be varying, that is what we can say. The average total inspection is greater than or equal to N and less than or equal to capital N per lot. This is the correct situation. <laughs> Okay, some objective type of question might be asked. He might ask, average total inspection is greater than sample size, less than lot size, or this is like this third option. So you have to go for this third option. This is what is meant by that. Is it understood? Now having understood this one, we need to find out the any some these things we can find out because for all our practical purposes now, irrespective whether it is a single sampling plan, double sampling plan or multiple sampling plan, we need to find out what is the probability of acceptance of the lot. How many lots will be accepted and how many will be rejected. Okay? So how do we find out for such a thing, what is the probability of acceptance? Quick distribution, that is why we talked about different types of distribution. Okay? For single sampling plan, I will be considering first, this is what the example of single sampling plan is given. Now we need to find out the probability of acceptance. How does it work here? From a lot of 10,000 items, you take a sample of 100 items. If these 100 items, it, if it contains 0, 1 or 2 defectives or less than or equal to 2 defectives, accept the lot, otherwise reject the lot. This is what it means. Is it understood? Then how do you put, is there any flow chart for this one? Can you draw the flow chart? Okay, I can give you here. In aspect, what is that? In aspect, sample of. N items, okay, if it contains defectives, if, no, you'll say if number of defectives Or number of if the number of defectives defectives this is a decision box in fact one is doesn't exceed how many items I said Acceptance number, that is, 
doesn't exceed C, then what is to be done? The lot will be accepted. Accept the lot. Okay. If the number of defectives exceed C, then what is to be done? It should be rejected. Lot should be rejected. Reject the lot. Resolve. So that is why for single sampling plan, only three parameters are there. That is, one is the lot size n, sample size small n, and the acceptance number c. This is how it works. Okay? What is the problem with respect to this? Now, we will start thinking, no sir, it is not giving, you are not giving enough chance for that lot. For example, it is just like this. Why we need to conduct three internal tests? Why not only one test? Can you able to understand this one? Why three? Why not one? I don't know, sir. We should be given some the concession, consideration. Because some of the students may not be feeling well during that time of examination or whatever it is. So there has to be certain things we need to, for certain eventualities, we need to be prepared. It doesn't mean that we have to give some 10 tests, 5 tests, internal tests like that. No. There is a limit. At the most, what we can do is, instead of one, two, two times. Because what we mean is, he has committed a mistake, okay, let him be given one more opportunity. That is what usually we consider, is it not? The same thing, the same problem is with this one. No, enough chance is not given. That means the producer may be the sufferer. But we also, because having accepted for acceptance sampling, there might be a possibility that the good lot might be rejected. But at the same time, the bad lot might be accepted. That is also true. But the safe position will be, instead of giving only one opportunity, you should give more than one opportunity. How many opportunities are to be given? Maybe two opportunities. That is called as only one opportunity, single sampling. This is what it costs. Two opportunities, this is double sampling plan. More than two opportunities, multiple sampling plan. Two samples, four samples, five samples, like that. So what is going to happen then? What are the consequences? In a single sampling plan, the decision can be taken very fast. Either the lot will be accepted or taking only one sample left will be accepted or rejected. And not a lot of mathematical calculations and other things are involved in that. Administrative cost will be less. Okay? This is what is going to happen in that case. The average number of pieces inspected in a single sampling plan, it is going to be more. Administrative cost will be less. Because one it decreases, another one increases. Information available, it might be very, very high. For the available quality level, it is very high. But acceptability to the producers, no. Because he wants that, he thinks that most of his lots will be not be accepted. Okay? That is why, instead of single sampling plan, most of the time, we might go for double sampling plan or the next plan. But nevertheless, we should know how to calculate the probability of acceptance for such a lot. Okay, right now we are discussing about the different sampling plans. So I'll take up an example, the same example, and then we know how to calculate. We'll see how to calculate and what type of questions can be asked regarding the same. Okay? Is it understood? This is what is called as 
सिंगल सैम्पलिंग फैन एंड वॉट आर इट्स एडवांटेजेस और डिसएडवांटेजेस नो विल गो फॉर द नेक्स्ट वन डबल सैम्पलिंग प्लान दैट मीन्स हियर द टू टाइम्स द सैंपल्स विल बी टेकन नॉट ओनली वंस द सैंपल विल बी टेकन टू सैंपल्स विल बी टेकन दैट मीन्स नॉट इमीडिएटली ओके इफ इट कंसिस्ट ऑफ 10,000 items will take one sample and 100 and another sample of 100 not like that okay try to understand it is not as simple as that so its parameters okay let me give you its parameters and then we'll try to discuss about it okay so as usual the parameter should be one lot size capital n and the sample first sample it will be denoted by n1 along with this sample the acceptance number will be attached that is c1 n1 c1 then n2 c2 but here there is some difference between c1 and c2 which will be made more clearer okay as i start explaining it will become more clearer otherwise it becomes something vague okay okay as we know these are the parameters now what is n1 n1 is the number of items in the first sample number of items in the first sample C1, C1 is equal to what? Acceptance number. For what? C1 I have mentioned acceptance number. Number for the first sample. n2 number of items in the second sample what is c2 acceptance number of number for the first sample no c2 is the combined acceptance number for the first as well as second sample together okay what this one acceptance number this c2 whatever is there it is not only for the second sample okay i will try to give an example that it clarifies your doubt okay c2 is what combined number of or acceptance number for acceptance number for for the two samples combined Okay, is understood. These are the parameters. This is what is meant by that. 
So let me give an example and then we'll try to write the flow chart for the double sampling plan. Two ways. First I'll give this example and then we'll draw this, this one flow chart or draw the flow chart and then according to that one analyze the example. So I'll go for the first one. That means first let us take an example and then see. Suppose it is given that n is equal to 500. Okay. n1 is equal to 35. c1 is equal to 1. n2 is equal to 50 and C2 is equal to 4. How does it work? Let us see. What is mentioned? Capital N is 500. N1 is 35. C1 is 1. N2 is 50. And C2 is equal to 4. Okay? That means out of a lot of 500, take the first sample of 35. If it contains 0 or 1 defectives, because C1 is equal to 1, 0 or 1 defectives, accept the lot, then and there itself. You need not have to go for taking the second sample. Try to understand this one. Okay, so this is the beauty of this double sampling plan. Not immediately you will collect two samples and other things, not like that. First sample you take of 35, if it contains 0 or 1 defective, you accept the lot. Suppose the first sample itself contains more than 4 defectives. Why more than 4 defectives I am telling? Because C2 is equal to 4. More than 4 defectives in the sense what? It may contain 5, 6, 7, 8 like that. Okay? So when you take the first sample itself, it may contain that 35. If it contains more than 4 defectives, you reject the lot. Don't go for second sample at all. Because that itself, it tells that the lot is bad. There is no point in going for second sample. Oh, that is what also you can see. If the borderline case is there, he can be given the another chance. If the person is trying to get zero score or something like that, there is no point. Even if I give the test, I cannot expect anything out of it. It is just like that. That means, if the lot is too good or too bad, the decision will be taken by taking only first sample. But if it is between these two, lot is neither good nor bad, then we are going to go for the second sample. Is it understood? This is the beauty of this one. Okay? The, it, it can distinguish. That is what the single sampling can distinguish. If the lot is too good or too bad, it can take care. This is what is being done here. Okay? Suppose if it is, say, for example, after taking the first sample, I get two defectives. Then what is to be done? Okay, if it were one defective, I would have accepted. If it were zero defective, I would have accepted the lot. If it were five defectives, I would have rejected the lot. But if I get two defectives, or three defectives, or say even four defectives, I will be indecisive. I cannot take any decision. I need to postpone that decision till I take the second sample. Is it understood? Okay. That means why I told two defectives, why it should not be accepted? Because it is between, it is greater than C1, but it is less than or equal to C2. Hence I am going for the second sample. Okay. In that case, Take a second sample of 50. If 
the combined number of defectives that means in the first sample i told you already you have got two defectives that means when i take another sample of 50 at the most how many defectives it can consist of not four defectives it can consist of only at the most two because it's the combined number already you have got two defectives in the first sample that is when you take the second sample that means combined that means out of 35 plus 50 samples together the total number of defectives should not exceed c2 that is what it shows means you have understood so if you have got two defectives in the first sample in second sample how many you can get to accept the lot either zero or one or two so if you add up all these things it will not exceed four but if i get three defectives in the second sample no the entire lot will be projected so there is no question for going for another sample. the iteration stops there okay this is about the double sampling plan and logically we can extend the same thing for multiple sampling plan multiple sampling plan means what more than two samples will be taken it will take three four five like that likewise each of these things will have the acceptance number c1 c2 c3 c4 c5 like that and they have got the same thing attached whatever i told you combined number c1 c2 c3 c4 c5 means what these are the combined number but apart from this one for each lot or for each sample it should have a rejection number associated with respect to that okay because that is what we told you know is it not rejection number in the sense what in the first after taking the first sample itself it will be rejected if it is more than c2 similarly in multiple sampling plan it should have some rejection number after taking first sample whether you can reject the lot or accept the lot or continue the lot that means go for second sample similarly in second sample why should have the rejection number that means whether i should accept the lot reject the lot or the sampling should continue likewise it will be given three four five times something like that but there is a limitation for that because the even though average total inspection will be less the problem is the decision making it goes on differing okay because if it is delayed delayed decision it is not preferred the time has passed then there is no use about it okay that is what we need to consider okay is it understood that is what is going to happen in case of multiple sampling plan and th this multiple sampling plan is nothing but the extension of the double sampling plan okay i will try to give the flow chart for double sampling plan and for multiple sampling plan you should be able to write yourself maybe preferably in the form of a table okay that is your task and at this moment i want to clarify about the sequential sampling plan also because in sequence it will go on here the number of samples will be more but in sequential item by item when it is going to be stopped we don't know because usually the sequential sampling plan is adopted for destructive testing methods because we can we if we test for all destructive nothing will be left that is what i told you that is why we have to go for acceptance sampling so again in really in this one sequential sampling plan will be used okay 
In that case, it is called as item by item sampling. It is almost similar to the multiple sampling plan. Sometimes they might use it interchangeably. In some of the books, they might use it interchangeably. But in sequential sampling plan, only one item will be tested like that every time. So it will have acceptance zone, continuous zone, continue the inspection or rejection zone. So I don't want to go much into detail because your syllabus, it says that we should stop only at the double sampling plan. But however, I wanted to give you some more input regarding these things. Okay, I can show you only on the graph what is the sequential sampling plan. Okay, so if we come across that, So if I draw for sequential sampling plan, this is number of items inspected, this is number of defectives. So here we can see that this is acceptance zone, this is continuation zone, continue the inspection, you cannot take any decision and this is rejection. Say for example here what it says is, at least it says you need to inspect five items. Okay? In five items, if you get zero defective, then the lot will be accepted. Suppose, when you test five, one defective or two defective, two defectives are there. You may get one or two defective. Then what? You should continue. Again, you have to take some other sample. Ten. Got this one? And if, when you are testing five, if it consists of, for example, five defectives, all five, or it might be, this might be changed. I, I would have started from here, because this is what, it, in general, it means. So these are the combined number of defectives, these are the combined number of, that means another five means totally out of ten. How many defectives? If it falls in this region or this region, according to that one, you will go on, Accepting the lot or continuing the inspection or rejecting the lot. This is what it calls. This is what is the continuous, that sequential sampling method. Almost it is similar to multiple sampling, that is what I told you. In multiple sampling, you can use the words N1 plus N2, N3, N4 like that, C1, C2, C3, C4. But instead of that one, here item by item inspection. That is why I had gone. I had drawn the graph. And for multiple sampling, I had given you as a homework or something like that on your own. You need to study about it. We can now coming back to double sampling plan. How does it work? Or the flow chart for that. That is what is my today's task and tomorrow 
If possible, if I get the time today, I will take up some examples. Or tomorrow, we will talk about some numericals and then that will be the concluding session. So here, in a fact, N1 number of pieces, N1 items, and if the number of defectives what is going to happen? What are the various possible ways out here? There are three possible ways. One is it might be less than or equal to C1 if the number of defectives are less than or equal to C1 doesn't exceed, doesn't exceed C1. Another thing is, extreme end is, it exceeds C2. So here, C2. For example, 4. If it is more than 4, in that case, what is going to happen? If it exceeds C2, then reject the lot. After taking the first sample itself, you can reject the lot if it consists of more than C2 defectives. You accept the lot if the number of defectives are less than or equal to C1, then accept the lot. But if number of defectives are number of defectives are greater than C1, but it is less than or equal to C2. Greater than C1, but less than defective, less than or equal to C2, then what is to be done? You continue. Okay. If it is like that, then you continue. Continue in the sense of what? Take a second sample. Take a second sample. of N2 and then number of defectives what it should happen number of defectives number of defectives in the sense the total number of defectives in the first and second samples combined if the number of defectives Defectives combined in first and second sample So if the number of defectives combined in first and second sample, it exceeds, exceed C2, then what is to be done? 
reject the lot. If it doesn't exceed, if it is less than or equal to C2, accept the lot. So this is how it needs to be done. Okay? This is how it needs to be done. So this is what we call it as double sampling plan. Okay, let us take an example and then try to work out on that. Okay? The usual questions what we will find out is, what is the having given lot size, sample sizes, acceptance numbers, we need to find out the probability of acceptance. These are possible questions I am talking about. Second, the average total inspection. And third, average outgoing quality. Fourth, average outgoing quality limit. Fifth, on an average, how many Items will be taken as samples, not average total, in a, uh, because it, it compares with different sampling plans, average number of samples, okay? And even we can design the sampling plans, okay? That is what we say that the OCR, or designing of the OC curve. These things need to be discussed. So we'll take up at least some two, three examples on this one. Before, so first let me take only one simple example on single sampling plan and then try to find out what is the probability of acceptance. It is as simple as that. How do we find out? Let us see. A single, you just take down this example, a single sampling plan uses a sample size of 1515. 15. Sample size of 15 and an acceptance number of 1. Okay? N is equal to 15, C is equal to...